solution Hello there and welcome to the next episode of Rags to Riches with Bly Spartans. Now if you watched the last episode you will know we got promoted, we're now in the Vanarama Conference North. So we've played around 6 or 7 games, we're going to talk about them in detail, we're going to show you one new signing that we have made and do a live comp against Boston United and finally we're going to do the FA Cup qualifying round second draw. So the first game of the season since promotion was away to Hednesford. Now I really didn't know what to expect in this game given we had some new players that I showed you in the last episode and we are working on a new system playing a counter game and a 4-2-3-1 instead of our normal 4-2-2-2. Well it was a great game to be involved in. We got off to a great start in the first half leading 2-0 scoring our second goal right on the stroke of half time and therefore we just had to defend a 2 0 lead against Hednesford. 16 shots, only 4 on target, but we did get 2 goals and 55% possession. Standout players in this game Jordan Story and Matt Wolfenden, who got an 8.3. I'm actually going to show you both goals in this game because they were something special. And really, with these two goals in the first game of the season, I'm hoping this is positive and this can be a boost and a, really a plan and a way forward for the season and this can really make our mark in the league. So here is our first goal in the opening game away to Hednesford scored by Dan McGuire. He takes a touch about 25 yards out, pings it in to the top left hand corner and a great goal that got me excited and looking forward to the season ahead. An absolute belter that gives us a vote of confidence. And here is the second goal scored by the ever impressive Matt Wolfenden. First time stroke of the ball into the top right hand corner and that is a player playing with confidence. Next up in the new campaign we welcome Gisley Park to Croft Park. We won 2-0 in a game that saw Robert Dale, the legend of Blythe Spartans who's probably going to reach around 500 appearances by the time he retires for Blythe Spartans. He scored in the 16th minute and Matt Wolfenden wrapped up in the 69th minute. 17 shots to 1. I've noticed guys that in the early games we're getting a lot of shots but not many are going on target so far. So that's something we may have to work on. 55% possession. Standout players were a few of them because they got above 7. But man of the match for me was Wolfie with an 8.1 and Jordan Story with an 8.7. Next up was Nuneaton away and as you can see we got beat 4-0. A Jacob Edgeskin double and an Elliot Whitehouse penalty and Ian Webb late on wrapped up 4-0 at the James Parnell Stadium. Now it might look like I was in this game in regards to shots 11-14 and we had more possession but honestly none of our players played well in this game. Now as you can see in the average ratings above for the match 5.6 for Connor Roberts Nurse and Jordan Watson got a 5.4. No player getting a 7. This doesn't reflect the match stats because we did not play as well as that suggests. We deserve to get beat 4-0 and to be honest after the match I checked Nuneaton's media prediction and it was second and you can definitely tell their second place media prediction to our 14th place media prediction definitely showed in this match. They're going to be up there come the end of the season. So after that 4-0 spanking away to Nuneaton it was time to go away to Chorley this time in a game where we really did play well. 20 shots, 7 on target, 52 percent possession. Connor Roberts Nurse getting a 9 in this game and also getting his first goal for the club. Simon Hackney, Dan McGuire and Gareth Swan also getting goals in this game. Next up was Ilkeston at home. Now as you know Ilkeston pipped me to the league title last season and this team have really become my bogey team. Daniel Adoa put them ahead after 62 minutes and while I was pushing for that equaliser he wrapped up in the 90th minute. No shots on target, only 5 in total for us in this game and a game that a few players had a stinker again. Nathan Turner and surprisingly Wolfie only got a 5.9. Poor match, poor result, poor defeat, poor performance. Next up was Halifax at home and we were down within 48 seconds. A game that was 
very tight. Again, that could have went either way. And again, saw us get an equaliser late on in the 75th minute before Gareth Swan popped up in the 86th, coming off the bench to notch the winner. Again, a game that not many players played too well, but our young rising star, Ben Blackman, got his first start of the season, I think, and two assists to his name. We then went away to Corby Town in a game that saw Wolfie put us up 1-0 after 22 minutes, but an instant reply from Aaron Apoku made it 1-1. Then Gareth Swan again coming off the bench, 58 minutes, put us 2-1 ahead. Cairo Mitchell equalising not long after, and in the 84th minute, Gareth Swan popped up with the winner to win 3-2. A game again that was very close, but they had a lot of shots, only 8 on target out of 23 and we only had 3 on target out of 19, which is very disappointing again. A lot of long shots seem to be happening, but that is weird because only Matt Wolfenden is instructed to shoot from any distance because he tends to score worldies in this game for me at this level. Now, he got a 7.7 in this match, 1 goal and 1 assist, and the other assist came from Ben Blackman. 3-2 victors away to Corby Town. And the final match before we play the live club against Boston United is home loss 1-0 to Brackley who went 1-0 ahead in the 77th minute through Eddie Odom high in boat. Now he used to play for Inverness, Caledonian Thistle. In this match, Jordan Story got a 7.1 and it says that we played quite poor regarding our average ratings for the match but this was a match we really did dominate. They went down to 10 men after 68 minutes. Levi Hutton Sutton got sent off. And then I decided to push forward. And within nine minutes of me saying, go attack, try and get that goal, it's a big chance, with the end down 10 men, we conceded and we just couldn't get that equaliser. This is probably the most disappointing loss of the season so far because we deserve to win, in my opinion. So there is our opening eight matches to the new season. And, of course, Boston United is up next. Their media predicted to finish 12th. We have won five matches, we have lost three, kept three clean sheets, three of those in the opening four matches. And so far, I'm pretty happy with that, considering we are predicted to finish 14th in the league. Now, we'll just quickly show you the league table before we get into today's match. So there we have it, eight games played, five wins, three losses, 13 goals scored, 10 conceded. Form is pretty decent, we've only lost two in our last five, winning the other three, we're sitting sixth. And we are four points off top place. Now, Neaton, who, of course, put us to the sword with a 4-0 victory. And Brackley, who just beat us, went into second place. Had we had won that, we had been sitting in the position they currently are. So far, guys, so good. I'm pretty happy with that. Good opening start to the eight games. Again, my prediction for myself, personally, was to finish mid-table. 14th was the media prediction. But, based on these opening games... And I believe the games we lost, we could have won at least one of them. If we can sneak into the playoffs this season, I would be absolutely delighted. So, Boston United at home next. They're sitting in 7th position, 2 points behind us. It's going to be a tight game. Let's get to it and let's play. Okay guys, the bookies have made us 4-6 to six favourites for this match. We're lining up against a 4-1-2-2-1. And we ourselves are playing... A 4-2-3-1. Lining up with Watson left back, Parker at central defence. Those two are stand up to last season. Brendan Pearson in goals keeps his number one slot that I gave him that was a little bit risky after Adam McHugh had been number one last season. Connor Roberts Nurse and Nathan Turner at right back and centre back. Two new signings. Stephen Turnbull has been disappointing this season. My assistant manager did tell me that he had declined. I didn't realise it was this much. He's not been as effective in games as he has been in the opening season last year. And the opening eight games so far, he's not been the best. Hopefully, that can change though. Jordan Story at centre midfielder. Ben Blackman getting a start on the right ahead of Simon Hackney, who's on the bench. Wolfie at shadow striker, AMC. Robert Dale, the legend, who's probably going to be this last season where he's going to start every game. Dan Maguire up front on the bench. Ryan Hutchison, Alex Nicholson, Michael Richardson, Simon Hackney and Gareth Swan. So the boys have been briefed. They've been told to push on because we are the favourites here. Big match, 6th place versus 7th place. Hopefully we can get a big 3 points today. And would you look at that? 
14 seconds in and Dan Maguire is injured. Unbelievable. That is very disappointing. Maguire straight off. Gareth Swan on. Unbelievable. 14 seconds and you're making a substitution. Madness. Okay, they didn't confirm my substitution. He's been properly injured now and not just... Potential upper body injury to Dan Magoya. Not the way you want to start a game, but we deal with it. We move on. Gareth Swan comes on. No shots in the opening 10 minutes. Felix plays it in. And he almost got lucky with that. Goes out for a corner and Walker to take it. Robert Dale puts out Felix. Back out to Walker. Plenty of time to make a cross. Cleared away. Back to Walker. Dixon. Plays it back to Gasson. And nothing comes of it. Throw in from Mills. Story picks it up. Plays it forward. Swan comes deep. Can he play it wide? Plenty of time. Blackman. 16 year old English young player. Turner plays a poor ball and Walker picks it up. Plays it forward and Rowe beats the offside trap and his men. Walker. Mills, Felix on the right, the number 9, plenty of time to put a cross in and nearly a goal from Rowe, puts it just wide, unlucky chance from Boston. Two shots, none on target for Boston in the opening 23 minutes and no shots at all for us. Story, Turnbull, Wolfenden, Swan, Swan goes for it, puts it over. Now Turnbull I did say had been playing poor. But I turned him to a deep line playmaker defend. Where last season I played deep line playmaker support. This is due to my tactical change. Felix and Felix puts Boston 1-0 up. Kane Felix, the seventh goal of the season already. In the ninth match of the season. Disappointing, but you can't say you can't say Boston have deserved a good good pass from Walker. Felix and bags of space. Watson loses his man. And he puts in the bottom right, Pearson, no chance. Couldn't miss from six yards out. 1-0 Boston. Been a poor start from us. One shot in the opening 28 minutes and nothing on target as it stands. That shot being a long one and nothing came of it from Gareth Swan. 36 minutes in, it's been a pretty boring match. There's been not a lot to talk about here. Wolfie, Turnbull, Dale. Swan is in, and a poor shot that was probably going wide, picked up by the Boston goalkeeper, Vint, who plays it long to roll, and nothing comes of it. Two shots, two long shots, both off target from us. Turnbull with the corner, Wolfie on the edge, puts it in, and Vint, the goalkeeper, collects it. Plays it long, and Felix picks it up. Our defender should have been of attacking that ball there. Half time. Poor, poor match. Absolutely nothing to talk about so far. And I'm not happy about it. Where's your passion? A lot of frustrated players out there. Well, you've got a frustrated manager. I want them to play a little bit more fluid, actually. I want more contribution to the game from each player. As I say, we are playing counter this season because we just came up and we're not expected to control and dominate matches like we did last season. And we won't score the goals we did last season. I think we scored 90 plus. I'm pretty sure we won't score that many this season. Especially with only one up front now. With Wolfie playing the AMC to be the creator as well as the goal scorer. 62 minutes gone. We're going to make a slight tactical change here and we're going to put Wolfie up front. Turn Swan into the poacher and make Wolfie the advance forward. And we'll see about bringing substitutes on. We'll bring Hackney on for Blackman and Richardson on for Turnbull. I'm going to put Richardson on as a box to box. Hopefully, going 4 4 2 can cause them a little bit of problems and I have more to worry about in terms of our strikers pushing forward. Mills, Vint. Comes out of his box to Doofus, former Everton player. Felix plays forward to Rowe. Rowe is beating the offside trap again but doesn't get anything from it. Pearson, Turner, Parker, Turnbull, 
substitutions not yet made and they will be no I'm going to turn on attack for the last 23 minutes we don't want to lose our second game in a row Hackney has picked up an injury, twisted ankle, sorry, you're staying on. We do not have enough players to take you off. We have no substitutes left. Parker, Nurse. Story. Long ball, looking out to Dale, but drops to Richardson. Story with the ball, Wolfenden. And nothing comes of it. I'm going to encourage the lads to push forward and hopefully nick an equaliser. A lot of frustrated players in my team. And rolls in, and he puts it over. Good chance for Boston to make it 2-0. We have eight, eight shots from our team, but only two on target. Only two of Boston's out of their six shots on target also. Of course, the goal being one of them. The game fizzing out to nothing here. There's been not a lot of action in this game. Probably one of the least entertaining live comms that we have done. Swan. Plays into Richardson. Forward to Wolfie. Oh, that was a great chance from Wolfie. Two yards out and the goalkeeper blocked it. And we will go overload for the last eight minutes. And I hope that we can get a goal, but it looks like it's not going to happen. Swan. Dale. Puts it in. Wolfie again from two yards out. Ah, oh, two golden chances that usually Wolfie would bury after 31 goals last season. He's only got a 5.9 this game. He's having a stinker. 92nd minute. Felix out on the right. He's going to keep the ball, surely, and he wins a corner. It's looking like we're going to fizz out to our second defeat in a row. And that will put Boston above us. And another defeat, our fourth of the season. Five wins, four losses. And, of course, we'll go further down the table. We're higher than expected. But the whole match is you really want to put up more of a fight in this. And we have been disappointing. And I'll be honest, Boston have not been good themselves, actually. There you go. Full-time whistle. Blythe Spartans nil. Boston United won. So that game only drops us down one position, putting Solihull Moors and Boston above us. We dropped down to seven, 15 points, 7 points off the top Nuneaton, who look like they're going rock solid in the league with 7 wins, 1 draw and 1 loss. Now, Stephen Turnbull, the key player, only got a 6.6. .6. He's been pretty disappointing. Man of the match with a 7.6, Kane Felix. And there you go, guys. It's disappointing to see that with a damaged spine, Dan McGuire, who got 27 goals last season and 20 assists, is now going to be out for two to three months. Genuinely gutted about that. Simon Hackney is also injured. He will be out for six to seven weeks. I should have pulled him off, but I couldn't because I was pushing for that equaliser. Disappointing. Two key players, one that's usually on the bench and one that starts. We're going to have to look for a replacement, in particular Hackney, because we don't have many wide players. The striker situation, I think think I should be fine for that. So here we are at the FA Cup second qualifying round draw. Now usually I do the teams one by one if we're say down to the last 60 or so just to make it interesting and as if it was being drawn live. But 160 teams in the draw, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to draw it automatically and see who we get. So we've drawn it and we will scroll down until we can find our team and see who we have drawn. Must be near the bottom, and we will be drawn away to Chase Town in the second qualifying round. As you remember, last season we did get to the fourth qualifying round, which was minimum expectation. Unluckily, getting put out to Macclesfield. So that's a FA Cup game to look forward to against Chase Town. So you may have noticed a name pop up that you've not seen before. Now I did say that we made one signing this recent. Episode now this is him Gareth Swan 16 years old born on the 1st of Jan sorry 12th of January 2000 valued three thousand pounds on five pounds per week for the next year four star potential ability current star one ability now four pros five cons potential to be a key member of the team we did pay five thousand pounds for him from Harrogate now. Granted, some of us attributes do not look great. Some of them look absolutely terrible. But the ones for the position he plays in, finishing 13 for a 16-year-old in this level. 
determination of 17, which will help him, acceleration of 13, natural fitness of 13, pace of 11, this guy could go to the top. He did play three games for Harrogate before I signed him, but for me, so far, he has made six appearances this season, all as a substitute and scored five goals. 7.16 average, this is the future, guys. He looks a bit like old school Roberto Baggio. He is the future of Blythe. He's going to follow in the footsteps of Dan Maguire. Really excited to use him. Remember the name, guys. This guy, Gareth Swan, is coming coming with me right to the top. Unless, of course, somebody nicks him from me. But he's coming with me all the way. Remember the name, Gareth Swan. So here we are back on the scheduled fixture list. Now, we have got three away games coming up against North Ferriby, Leamington and... Uh, FA Cup match away to the Scholars against Chase Town before a double game against Gainsborough and AFC filed at home. Staley Bridge away, Alfred at home, away to Lowescroft, then at home to Telford. But the next live call we're going to do and bring you the next episode is Harrogate away. Now, the reason I'm playing Harrogate at the CNG Stadium away is so we can play Gareth Swan against his former team, a reunion for him against Harrogate, and hopefully he can do the business for us. Thanks for checking out the next episode of Rags to Riches, guys. If you haven't seen any so far, go back and have a look. It's in the playlist on my YouTube channel, which, of course, you are on. If you're just passing by and you aren't subscribed to the channel, please do drop a like on the video, and thanks for the, all the support. We're the managers, and so are you. Take care, and I will see you again soon.